Akshar Patel is a slow left arm orthodox bowler by definition. That is what we call lefty finger spinners, right? But Akshar is not so slow, and he's certainly not that orthodox. He's a modern creation the likes of which we have not really seen before. But because it's all so subtle, most of us barely notice it at all. But let's start with a fairly non-subtle shot, the sweep. Not just the sweep, but let's lump in, I don't know, the reverse, lap, paddle, slog, whatever else you want in there. These are fairly normal cricket shots we see all the time. Not all batters can sweep, but about 5% of shots from spinners tend to be sweeps. That's because the guys who do it play that shot a lot. And the rate at which people sweep Akshar is the same for any other left arm finger spinners. It feels like less, and here's why. No one can really score from him when they sweep. For other slow left armers, you can score around 11 runs per over by playing the sweep. For him, it's almost half that at just over a runner ball. That's pretty shocking, but I can do better. Not only will you not score that much more than a runner ball from the sweep against him, you'll also be dismissed every 6.6 .6 balls. He has 9 wickets from all types of sweeps, while batters have scored just 61 runs against him in those shots. There is no risk and reward for an Akshar sweep, there is only risk. Put it this way, in those 60 sweeps, 31 of them were considered in control by Crick Info, the other 29 were not. It's basically a 50-50 between hitting it where you want and not hitting it where you want when you try and sweep him. You are just not in control of that shot when you face Akshar Patel. It's like Two-Face flipping a coin. If I stopped right here, I think I would have already proven that he's not like other spinners. But you kind of must have guessed that already, right? Many will point to his bowling average of 11.67 after five tests just for that purpose. But while that tells you how well he has done, it doesn't tell you exactly how he has done it. For that, you really need to head over to Himanish's piece, which is extraordinary, because it breaks down all the little ways that Akshar is different from other bowlers. So let's look at why he's a problem. And I want you to think of those sweeps again. That is a cross batter shot, and Akshar has a high release. And not just a little high either, he's at the same basic release point as Kyle James. And you can see on here just how much higher he is at release than like a normal left arm finger spin. He's huge, except for the fact he's not actually huge. According to every single source I could find online, he's just a centimetre short of six foot tall. That's basically my height, and I cannot bowl at 230 centimetres. I doubt most six footers could. And to put this into perspective, Kyle Jameson is over 20 centimetres taller than Aksha, and yet they're releasing from pretty much the same height. Aksha is either losing no height at the crease, which should be almost impossible, or he has a positive wingspan. You may have been told that your wingspan, fingertip to fingertip, is the same as your height, but chances are, if you're a climbing fan, or a basketball fan, or even a swimming fan, you may be aware that just isn't true. For that, there is the Ape Index, which, if we're being honest, sounds racist. Take NBA player Norman Powell. He's 191 centimeters, but his wingspan is 211, meaning his arm length is basically that of a seven foot tall person. And yet, he's not that much taller than a standard six footer. For generations, basketballers were drafted based on their height, but you don't put the ball on top of your head and the same is true for bowling. My guess is that Akshar has a positive wingspan, but it's not just wingspan. The Bayesian left arm finger spinner Salim and Ben was also over 200 centimeters, and these two camera angles are a bit different, but you can see how much Akshar keeps his height, and you can see how much Ben loses his. That might account for some of it, but that's not the only weird thing Akshar does at the crease. He also comes wide, and not just a little. He's right at the edge of the crease, and certainly one of the widest deliverers of balls of any left arm finger spinners. And some of that, of course, might again be the longer arms, if he actually has them. But what all this means is that Akshar is bowling from a place that no other left arm finger spinner bowls from. This is Rangana Harath. He's far closer to the stumps and obviously a whole lot shorter. And this is where Akshar Patel is releasing from in comparison. Batters learn by repeatedly facing bowlers who do similar things. But in height and release, Akshar is a double outlier. A finger spinning version of Lassif Malinga who just doesn't look that weird but may in fact be that weird. These are the left arm finger spinners of the last couple of decades who bowl around the wicket to right handers a lot. And I've also chucked Bisham Beatty in there because he's great. The width is the obvious main difference here. He's releasing from the return crease and the rest are easily inside it. But the other thing is, a bit like how I showed you with Ben before, most of them lose their height by falling over at the point of release. Akshar doesn't. It's clear from just these still images how different he is from other bowlers of his type. Him standing up straight allows for the ball to come out higher and wider. And consider this, both Daniel Vittori and Monty Panasar are taller than Akshar. And it doesn't matter, because his action allows for him to be taller. 
And I did ask some finger spinners about all this because you'll also notice that most of the heads have fallen over here. I assume this has something to do with coming around the wicket and trying to land the ball around middle and leg stump. The inside part of your technique has to collapse a little bit quicker. But that's also interesting because Akshar doesn't do that. At the crease, he doesn't really look anything like any other left arm finger spinner. Now there is a reason that left arm finger spinners didn't go wide on purpose. Because traditionally to get an LBW, you had to land the ball around the tram tracks and straighten it. If you came from too wide, the umpire gave the benefit of the doubt to the batter. That doesn't happen anymore. So Akshar can come as wide as he wants, but he'll still get plenty of leg befores. That's probably not a cunning ploy by him, but he has grown up in an era where umpires understand better where the stumps are, so he doesn't get penalised for coming wide as many previous slow left armers would have. Another advantage for LBWs when it comes to Axar is that he doesn't turn the ball too much. He pitches each ball near the line of off stump and the ball slides through. Other slow left armers tweak it a lot more than him, and on first glance you'd think this was a weakness. But when combined with a few other factors, his lack of turn is actually a strength for him on Indian pitches. And let me explain exactly what I mean here. The majority of Akshar's balls, even those that spin, actually move into a right-handed batter. And I know that's confusing, because they are actually spinning away, but they're still moving in. If this graph doesn't help you, let's look at a Zach Crawley dismissal. This is him on the front foot being taken LBW. If your first thought was, like mine, oh, that's an arm ball or an underspinner, and he's played the wrong line. That makes sense, that's what it looks like. But let me try and explain this using Himanish's graphics. Let's look at part one. This is what the ball did before bouncing. You can see the incredible width here to start with. What is harder to see is the drift the ball makes. So let's bring that up with the second slide. You can see that the light blue line showing where the ball would have gone without drift. And so let's just see the ball again here quickly. At this point, Crawley would have seen the spin and then automatically played for the drift as well. And so right now he's thinking the ball will spin past the outside edge of the bat based on the revolutions and the drift. So let's go to part three of the graphic. You can see where the ball would have gone if it didn't spin. It would have taken out a fifth leg stump or maybe even gone slightly wider than that. But when we play the next part of his work, you can see that it does straighten and the ball's going on to hit leg stump according to Hawkeye. But the ball does something more interesting than that. You can see that pitches on middle, but it hits leg. Think about that for a moment. If you are a top level batter and you have seen a ball with a lot of spin, you are expecting it to turn away from you but this ball has enough spin to turn at least two stump widths away from the bat, but it actually still keeps coming into you. Crawley sees the ball turning, plays for the turn, and the ball does actually turn, but it also comes back into him, so he's nowhere near the line of it, even though he hasn't really made a massive mistake, but he's still out, so no one cares. Two decades earlier, this would have rarely been out because no umpire would give a ball out when it's bowled from so wide, and it appears to be an arm ball sliding down length. But the important thing is that we now know this isn't a straight ball and it spins enough to confuse the batter and then take the leg stump, all while actually coming into the batter. Akshar Patel isn't beating batters with arm balls, but actually spinning the ball away, yet the angle means it continues to slide in. He's created a near perfect dismissal for DRS. So despite putting spin on the ball that should take it away, most of his deliveries actually come back in towards right-handers. No one else on record does anything like this. And being that it wouldn't have worked before DRS, I doubt anyone had ever done it earlier. But he also does all this very quickly because he is a fast spinner. On average, his delivery is six kilometers an hour quicker than the median delivery of a slow left armor. He is, by definition, a fast, slow left armor. This makes coming down the wicket tough to him as at that speed, using your feet is dangerous as there is no backup. If you come down and the keeper takes it, as Pant just did here, you're probably gone. And one of the reasons he's quick is because Akshar doesn't fly the ball. He darts in almost every single delivery he bowls. Maybe in part because he was mostly a white ball bowler, but also probably because he could and it didn't matter. Most spinners rely on flight, but he's not got any. This allows him to hit a length a lot. And he does actually hit a good length far more than any other left arm finger spinner. He's incredibly consistent with length. Now part of that is the lack of flight and obviously his own skill but also because no one can hit him off a length. How do you disrupt where a spinner drops the ball? The two most common ways are sweeping or using your feet. Well, I think I've already proven that sweeping him is dangerous, and it's also rare that he gets swept for a boundary, so no one has really taken him off his length that way. And coming down the wicket to someone as fast as him is not a safe option either. So he can hit whatever his most dangerous length is again and again. 
And let's look at spinners for a moment. 70% of the balls from the five to five and a half meter length are played on the front foot by a batter. While facing Aksha, only 51% of the balls are played on the front foot. Now part of that is simply because he's releasing the ball from so high. But there is something else he does that confuses batters. Himanesh calls it lift. I'd probably call it hang time. But first, a quick history lesson. The demon Fred Spothoth was really the first bowler to control the swinging ball. And the demon was a very smart man, a bank clerk by day, and he wanted to know how he was moving the ball in the air. He thought it was because of the rotations he put on the ball, not from the seam causing resistance. The first scientist he contacted told him that it was an optical illusion and that the ball wasn't moving. He also studied baseball pitchers to understand how they moved the ball around. Now, with all that in mind, Spoffer actually thought he could swing the ball in, out, up, and down. The first two we talk about a lot, so that seems fine. Down we now know is because the ball gets overspin on it, and it's one reason why slower balls are so hard to hit. And then there's the up, and I was never quite so sure about this because it does seem rather odd. But maybe it's not so much up as the ball just bounces fuller than you would expect. Himanish is way smarter than me, and he does all that kind of sciencey stuff for his day job. And what he has seen is that Akshar Patel's balls lift, or hang, longer in the air than other deliveries. And it could have something to do with how he spins the ball. He really uses a more flying saucer approach than say someone like Nathan Lyon, who has more traditional overspin. The underspinner really came into vogue when DRS hit, probably first through Graham Swan, and then it was mastered by R. Ashwin. The lack of overspin on the delivery means that the ball lands fuller than you would expect. And so for a batter, that means that you might play the wrong shot. My guess is that other bowlers do this, and not just spinners, but even quicks. But what we know is that, surprise, surprise, Aksha does it more than most, and he gets a lot of hang time. The ball is fuller than you think, you choose the wrong shot, and you are gone. And at the moment, the batters are gone a lot. We have no idea if he'll ever play overseas, and even if he can keep this up. It's also possible that as he plays more, batters will find a way to at least slow his wickets down. And he's never been this good in first class cricket. Of course, he's also never had TRS to assist him in first class cricket. And I should point out that most of this data that's been used in this piece, and certainly all of it from Himanesh's piece, is from Akshar's first four tests. It doesn't include the fifth one. And the reason for that is that around that time, boards stopped putting up Hawkeye data on their sites. And at first I thought it was just because the teams realized that everyone was sharing it. But then I also realized that it was right across a few different boards who don't always get along and certainly don't do anything in any kind of synchronicity. I think Hawkeye realized that everyone was using their data and has decided to not allow it to be used anymore, which is a real shame. Of course, I think that would be wrong because what people like him and Ash have done is actually shown what the future of cricket writing could be. And more importantly, what the future of cricket could be. All of us now know more about Akshar Patel and spin bowling in general than we did before. Any youngster with talent could use this piece to further their game. The more information out there, the better we can understand how people can take wickets and help train up new generations. To paraphrase the great Tiger Bill O'Reilly, most of what we say about spin is you know, nonsense. But thanks to this piece, what I now know is that Akshar Patel is a fast, slow, left arm, unorthodox, orthodox bowler. And I think we can tell from his bowling average so far that that is one hell of a creation. Mm -hmm.